Hello and welcome to this video. In this session I'm going to show you some alternative ways of downloading data from Bloomberg into Excel. Firstly, I'll show you how to download panel data of a company from the FA function. So let's first of all select the company. Go to the financial analysis function. And on here you have a range of accounting data such as the income statement, balance sheet and cash flow statements. But on this using the red toolbar we can export some of this data into Excel. Now if you go to the first one, Excel, and you've got the current template, that is what you can currently see on the screen. So at the minute it is the cash flow in the standardized view. If I was to click that, Bloomberg would generate this report in the background. The spreadsheet would appear. And what you can see is it's a range of BDH functions that's produced all this data. So I'll close that. If we go to export again, go to the custom report feature. It will bring up this menu where you can actually ask it, say, well, what do you want? So on, on here, it's already pre-populated some popular ones. So let's have the income statement, the balance sheet, the cash flow. And I also want the uh, profitability ratios. And like I said, you can go on this side and look for other, other templates as well. But if you just want them for, again, the red toolbar, just press 1 to generate. And again, this spreadsheet will appear shortly. When this spreadsheet has appeared, it will search all the individual data requests, which may take some time. But on here you have the range of tabs that we asked for along the bottom. Okay, so I'll close that. The third option on here is to actually go to the Excel template library, the function XLTP, and these are actually a list of custom built spreadsheets that link to this function. But we'll, instead of going via that route, let's actually look at the function. XLTP Go. And on here, it gives you an overview of the range of spreadsheets that have been created. And at the minute, there is 313. Now, these spreadsheets are created by individuals within Bloomberg and they've made it publicly available. And each spreadsheet has a help feature. To help you navigate, you can use a search field to search for a spreadsheet that you may be interested in. So let's look for options trading. So on here you've got spreadsheets, you've got at least 21 related to options. So you can you can have a scroll through by clicking down, or you can have a look at the list view here, and it'll give you then the full name. Alternatively, you might want to look at trading strategies such as pair trading. And then there is actually two spreadsheets linked to this. But whatever you're looking for, just search in the AMBA field and there may be a spreadsheet that is relevant to what you're looking for. But let's just look at the equity overview for simplicity. So the main one is the company in-depth analysis. If you click on it here, it will give you kind of overview of what it looks like. It will give you a detailed description. Let's see what functions it links to. Underneath, it will give you a list of other templates that are relevant. But if you want to use this one, you can click one open here. Or on the previous key screen, to open here, press that, and because it's a large spreadsheet, it will take some time to open up, so please be patient. Now that this spreadsheet is now open and completely finished downloading, what you'll notice is a range of tabs, and there'll always be a green help tab. And on that tab, it provides user instructions 
of how to operate these templates. But the majority of the time, they're relatively simple. Typically, wherever there's an amber field, this is where you can change it. So in this case, it's always pre-populated to Apple. So if you want to change it, you'd have to change the company here. But the clue is, it doesn't say equity, it just says Apple US. So that means when you want to change it, chances are all you need to put in is the ticker and the country, not the word equity. So let's change it to Lloyds Banking Group, LN, Lloyds LN, press enter, and give it time, it will change the whole spreadsheet and it'll be more relevant to Lloyds Banking Group. So again, when that finishes, go and have a look through some of the tabs to get more information uh, that you're interested in. Now, the user in this spreadsheet might actually be easier than navigating Bloomberg itself. So it's always good to start with, if you want to do a company in-depth analysis, have a play with this first rather than going through the Bloomberg functions. Now, let's move on to a more recent addition from Bloomberg, and that's Bloomberg Query Language. And the function for that is BQLX. Bloomberg Query Language for Excel. Now what this does is it combines coding and Bloomberg's software to produce more specific data without the need to download and calculate it yourself. So for example, if you're looking for sector averages for PE ratios, within a portfolio, you'd have to download every PA ratio for the company within your portfolio, categorize that per industry, then look for the average. And that would be a bit of a piece of work. Bloomberg have created this language which you can use to try and do all that with one command. And they break it down on this function via equities, funds, fixed income, economics, and portfolio. But wherever you see the resources button, it gives you a list of fact sheets or tutorials that and videos to use. I'd always recommend if you want to use this by watching the videos, but then downloading the tutorials, and it will show you how to create the commands. So I'll do that PA one as an example, and that's within the resources for portfolio. So in here, there's only one tutorial BQL for portfolio. We'll click and open that. And when this spreadsheet opens, it gives you a good user guide and kind of explains it step by step in a user friendly manner. So this is something you'll have to learn and understand. But the benefit is it provides examples. So I'll go to the equity one. So this is for shares rather than fixed income. And it'll give you a list of commands just as examples. So I'll go to that example I said earlier regarding the PA ratios per sector for equities in a portfolio. So here's the example. So just to copy it for my purposes, let's copy that, move over to a blank cell, press enter, and at the minute it will say invalid. And that's because I need to change this unique code here that links to a portfolio of mine. And where we find that is within the PRTU function. So if I open up one of my previous portfolios, it'll say the ID number here. I copy that. I'll go back to my command and change it within this code. Press enter. And what you'll see there is it's provided the average, it'll provided the data here for my portfolio. Now at the minute I don't fully understand this command, but because I've been able to use the examples. It's worked. 
And for instance, at the minute I've got average, but if I want to change Mac, if I want like the maximum PE ratio in the industry, just change it to max. You could do min, standard deviation, and so on. And that that gives you an idea of how powerful these commands could be. But do make use of the examples. And if you read through the examples, then you'll very quickly learn how to do the grouping, how to change PE ratio to something else. Again, for that, you just use the FLDS function to change PA ratio, where, where you can see it there, you just change that to something like leverage as an example, using the right mnemonic, and then it will change it for you. So the Bloomberg query language is something worth having a read and understand of, if not for the moment, just use some of the examples provided within this function. And as this function grows, more training videos within Bloomberg will come available. I hope you found this extra Excel tuition tutorial useful. Thank you for watching.